So hello everybody, welcome to Meet the Juggler. Uh, today we're very happy to have Idris Roca. Is that how you say your name, Idris Ro yeah. Roca? Yeah, exactly. And um, what I particularly enjoy about Idris is um, that uh, he, he puts, you, you can see with how he has a very special style of, of juggling anyway in, in, in his videos and how he expresses himself. And it's, um, you can see there's a lot of attention on how on how uh, Idris juggles rather than just like what, you know? And this whole how thing opens up a uh, uh, whole world of, of things for people. So, uh, and this is what I'm particularly interested in getting across in these, um, in these sessions is, um, is the fact that, you know, that our pleasure from learning to juggle is through challenges and challenges doesn't necessarily have to be ever more difficult you know the challenges can be all sorts of things so this will be something i'd like like you to talk about as well it's, it's this balance between what i can do and what i can't do yet which brings us into the, the, the into this really enjoyable flow state which we we all love you know with juggling and when we start to lose this it gets a bit hard you know it gets a bit stuck a bit 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 of a suffering you know for, for some jugglers some people never lose it, you know. They always find their way of going in, into this, into this uh, enjoyment, and uh, so yeah, this is a little bit like, like the, the context, and um, and also you've you've been to the La Lido, no? You've been to the school in France, yeah. And um, I often say to, say to jugglers, you know, it's like circus schools aren't the best places to go, but I think there are some really good schools, you know. Because sometimes black jugglers, we're a bit like the black sheep. You know, we're a little bit like you do your own thing and they don't really know how to help you and you have a space and... Uh, mm. so, um, yeah, that's true. So anyway, but, uh, you know, it gives you a, a window of time. You know, I'll have these two years or whatever it is to, to work on my thing. And uh, So anyway, Idris, please, uh, uh, um, just uh, how, how did you start juggling? What was the spark? Like, what was the thing that, uh, that, that said, yes, this is, uh, I love this? <laughs> um, I think it's, for me, in, in my case, it's a bit of a complicated question to answer because um, I've been, basically I've been doing circus ever since I was a very little kid. I think I started doing amateur circus around four. Wow. Um, You've mentioned Lido, which is a, a professional school, but that's also um, a more amateur side. And so I actually lived in Toulouse ever since I was a kid and I started circus in Lido and, and I, I've always sort of done it. But for the longest of time, um, I wasn't interested in juggling. It was something that existed that I knew was doable. I could do a little bit of it. I sort of always have been able to do three balls, three clubs, uh, basic passing, because that's the sort of thing you do in amateur circus, you sort of pick up those skills. But I wasn't interested in it. And I think the, the point where I started to to realize that I wanted to do juggling was long after I realized that I wanted to go on stage doing circus. And the funny thing is that I, I knew that was a, that going on stage was the thing I wanted to do with my life. And then at one point, I think I was 18, um, I had been doing mainly floor acrobatics at the time, and I still um, very much love this discipline. But having grown up in that environment of Lido, of so many incredible jugglers that have gone through it, um, with incredible personal styles and, and, you know, technical prowess, but also creative prowess in some sort, um, there was just a point where I went, oh, that's what I want to do. That's the tool that I think is going to lead me to what I love, which is choreography, rhythm, um, uh, a jazzy sort of almost instant feel of movement and rhythm and, and transformation and, and you know, um, uh, surprises that I really loved and that I, I thought at the time was really prevalent in the juggling I saw. And so when I went to professional circus schools, I basically had that decision of, oh, that's what I'm going to do with my life. I'm going to do the auditions next year. And I picked up juggling, pretty much. And so I always had this very clear focus of, um, okay, I'm juggling because that's what I, how I want to express on stage. That was my whole sort of 
intent for doing it, basically. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's coming from like a necessity to, 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 to express, no? And um, so, um, yeah, let, let, let's just go, just go through um, like a little bit how, how you, how is your training or your playing? Like how, how, how what do you do now? You, 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 uh, you have like a structured part and then you impro or the whole thing's like impro or where you dedicate time or, or how, how is this in, in, in like an art, like in a whole year, let's say in a whole year, because sometimes you don't do the same things all, every yeah, day. You know? Pretty much. Um, well, um, I think, I think my, my practice is structured by sort of a tension between me basically being a very intuitive, um, uh, playful, almost lazy at times person and having a side of me that is very analytical and very interested in, in finding the right intent and finding the right tools to do so. And so there's this tension of basically my whole ethos of juggling is I'm going to be very intelligent in the ways I trick myself so that I can play all year long. Mm. That's sort of my philosophy. So basically, I think the into, my, my, my first instinct is always to go to improv and to what in the moment I'm more interested in. So I will very often start a, um, um, uh, start a session of juggling with no intent whatsoever and just start moving and find where that leads me. And along the way, I will sort of pick up, oh, okay, um, I'm doing this rather instinctively. How can I structure it? How can I work on this particular trick? How can I push it? And, and sometimes realize that, oh, today, um, I'm gonna be very, very focused on this one trick that I really love today. Mm. And, and the next time I will begin fresh of all that influence of the last time. And, sort of find, okay, where am I today? And very often in my practice, I find that I will do everything intuitively until the point where it doesn't work anymore, because sometimes you're just not in the right state of mind to sort of find the good thing naturally, find what you like, uh, be creative instantly. And at that point, methodology will sort of pick up and try mm -hmm. and, and create um, uh, an environment for me to find creativity again, to find my intuition again, basically. So it's a bit formless, so it's very difficult to explore, but at times I will be very formless, at times I will be very, very um, squarely methodological, cruelly constraining, if you will. <laughs> no, no, you've been, you've been very clear, very clear. Um, so, um, yeah, we could we could say that the drive behind this is really a, a, a curiosity, you know. And I think lots of jugglers we have this curio curiosity, yeah. and when when we realise that our curiosity can actually be directed into different avenues, then other whole other fields of exploration start start to start to appear. And um, yeah, and I think it, in in modern juggling there's this feeling that we all have had at one point or another of seeing someone on stage do something that we didn't even think was possible. And I think that's the most wonderful feeling uh, as a spectator, as a, as a juggler, I think it's, it becomes a bit different. I think for a lot of people, this is what got them into juggling. And this is what makes, I don't know, people like Wes or uh, Zach McAllister who are very creatively minded jugglers that sort of invent, almost inventors of juggling, so popular today. It's this, this drive for curiosity, for finding the new thing and, and being surprised. I think there's a great deal of that. And I think it's yeah, what, um, what um, There's this, this small component of, uh, of be, being curious, curious, but also very near to how you're feeling. You know, this is what comes across to me. You know, like, let, let's try and break this down a little bit, because when we talk about, yeah, play, juggle with how you're feeling, use your expression, for lots of jugglers, this gets a bit fluffy, you know, they're like, what yeah. are you talking about, you know, and it becomes a bit, but when we see you, when we see you, you're, you're, you're juggling, it becomes very real, you know, it's like, yeah, if I work in this way where I'm really working with how I express myself and feeling the dynamics and, and be connecting to the props and uh, 
then it becomes alive in a whole other way. And uh, I, I think a lot of jugglers would benefit from this approach if they want to, you know, it's like, hey, it's, it's only like, a, it's like another, another, it's just a, another direction you could just play around with, you know, and uh, some people find it very hard, eh? they're very self-conscious. So they find it hard to, to break out into this. Uh, perhaps you could, you, perhaps you could uh, suggest some, some advice to people that feel a bit self-conscious to, to sort of break out of their normal routine. Um, I, I, I think what it's about, and <clears throat> I sort of luckily had a clear focus when I started juggling, as I said before. So I don't think I've had this problem. But I think juggling, especially as an amateur um, sport or art form, depending on where you live, is, is quite normative because it comes from circus and circus as, a, as an art form in general is very, very normative. There are tricks that are classics and that you need to be able to do and there is sort of a, uh, an understand a global understanding of the juggling community of what steps you should undertake to be a good juggler and and sometimes people sort of um propose things like okay if you can't do your five clubs cascade you're not a real juggler if you can't do seven balls there's sort of all those milestones on the way to a normal juggler basically and I think at times um, it doesn't fit everybody. I think there are people who genuinely thrive in that environment of learn this in that order, but not everybody. And I think a tremendous help for me was to always sort of listen to what made me feel good short term, basically. Mm. So a session of juggling will always for me compose of things that I find fun, things that I find interesting to do, things that I find empowering to try and learn in a very short-sighted way, if you will. And I think it's, it's all about trying to find pleasure with how you practice. And by finding pleasure in how you practice, you start doing things differently than other people by the only virtue that your likes and dislikes, um, if, you, if you train them enough, so to speak, they will become strange in a way that is unique to you. Sure. I think it's a very powerful thing to just try and understand what's, what you as a person feel good doing. And then, you know, there's this whole thing about juggling. About how do you find your style and many other art forms? And I think your style is those things that you cannot run from. It's not something you develop. It's something that falls on you by the repetition of the things you do differently than others because you are the person you are. And I think being really, um, uh, I don't know, um, strict in a, in a weird way about how you play and being always in a zone where you, you find a kind of immediate pleasure, even if it's the pleasure of uh, learning something that you're going to be able to do in the future. I'm not going to say always do things that are going to work now. But I think that's how you sort of go out of your way, just by doing stuff and listening oh does this bring me pleasure or is this something i do because i think i must do it and i think there's there's an interesting thing to seek out there and i think my only achievement in juggling because i don't think i'm a good juggler i don't think i'm a productive juggler i don't think i'm a i'm a particularly interesting juggler but i think i am a juggler that does exactly what he wants to do and you know, people respond to that. And, and I think I've got a style that's a bit weird and a bit different and that interests people just by virtue of me being basically incapable of forcing myself into avenues I don't like. I, I sort of have found a style. And I think it, in my case, it has to do with that. No, no excellent. No, you're saying all things that uh, fully echo with me. And, uh, and things I try and get across all the time, but it's really beautiful just to hear, hear it coming from you like this way, you know. I mean, it's very clear, you know, it becomes very clear. And, uh, and, and this is, we need this, you know, it's, um, and, um, <laughs> so, um, so uh, let's, so you, you've got, you, you have some individual shows as well, Idris, where you work with other people or, and how is the creative process then with other people? Mm. 
Um, so the the one show that I've worked most on for the last, I'd say, three years and that um, premiered uh, last winter, which meant that, unfortunately, it didn't play a lot yet, and we hope it's going to get in the future a lot more mm -hmm. um, chances to play, is sort of um, a trio where there's no um, juggling object, let's say, but there's a lot of manipulation, a lot of um, juggling with uh, common objects. Like, for instance, we have a, a trio of juggling with a light bulb, which is a really fun thing because once in a while it drops during a show and it's a fantastic thing to have this irreversible moment where you cannot continue the, the, the show because, well, you've broken the only juggling object. It's a very fun thing to do. And I'd say our trial very much hinges on that, that, on what I said. It's about three people who have got nothing in their life and just are bored all day living together. And they sort of invent ways to get out of that terrible, terrible sense of emptiness. And so it has to do with a bit of clown. It has to do with acrobatics. We, we've worked a lot on, on, um, on falls and uh, uh, slapstick and and acrobatics that just fall apart. And there's really an ethos of, of, you know, trying to find pleasure and failing and succeeding. And so I think in, the, in a funny way, my two partners for that show, we actually have the same kind of dynamic going that I have alone, which is we get into a room and we try not to get bored. And basically we've written a show about this. And I'm a fervent proponent of the idea that the method of creation is the object you create. It's the same thing. There is no moment where a, a fairy descends upon you and, and, and can disconnect how you've worked on something and the result that it's going to be. And I think I've, I've been lucky in the case of that show. It's a show about three people who try to avoid boredom and what is artistic creation in a group, if not putting multiple persons in a room and trying not to get bored. So it just wrote itself in that way. Yeah, yeah, sometimes we just find these nuggets and when we do it, it works. And other times it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes we try and be too precise, you know, we create something, you want to know everything step by step. And, uh, has to be like on the dot with the music uh, and it all becomes a huge stress you know but when i find myself in a character or in a mood or in uh th then it just um yeah it just just works so much yeah. better yeah 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 and i think but, there's this thing of like um what i was saying yeah. about finding pleasure and I, I, think, I think you agree on that is that pleasure it has this wonderful quality of it's yours and you can apply it depending on your personal tastes, likes and dislikes and, and the places you find pleasure to anything. And I think that's the wonder of when you look at all those incredible jugglers that we have in our community, the ones that have really pushed the envelope, they do so in such different ways. But I, my, my suspicion is that they all do so in a manner that feels pr profoundly pleasurable to them. And even people who are like super precise and need to have this exact uh, this exact structure to you know empower their 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 juggling i'm sure they do so from a place of genuine ecstasy you know some i think about like somebody like uh, zach delong or there's there's a lot of jugglers who like this precision of writing who like this this timing thing and i think that's wonderful to know that um you might imitate them but if you don't have that in you, that pleasure they have doing that, you're not going to get as far. You're not, you're not going to get as productive in a way. No, no, no absolutely. And this is, a, this is a point I try and make all the time. You know, we could copy. I don't want to say copy because I don't, I don't even mean that. We can try and Im imitate things that we enjoy and we like, but we need to come from this place. And, and, and this is actually another reason why I'm having these conversations now to get this passion across, you know, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, so you, you might, might just go take it a whole other other route. So, um, Idris, um, mm, I don't know if you feel like just 
showing us like try, trying to transmit what it is you're trying to work on right now like just grab a club or something and say yeah i try i'm trying to do this sort of thing or okay <laughs> try and show something i i live in a very tiny flat maybe yeah, yeah, yeah i mean not like you're showing something but like you're um but at the same time you're showing what you're working on yeah yeah i'm gonna try and see okay can you hear me if i take my headphone back yeah, yeah, but we could see you. Okay, <laughs> so, so uh, a thing that I'm working on uh, recently has been um, this manipulation with one club, and I've been very, very strict about it. It's it's a, a thing about windows and negative spaces and going into, and the technique is very, very narrow, and I'm trying to keep it that way and to find expression within that narrow window. So I'm going to try and show you a bit of it. <laughs> okay. Can you see me? Okay. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. No, see so you know, Yeah, raise it a little up a little bit. Yeah, cool. Okay. So basically, the main the main idea is this. So so you're going to have things like this. to give you an idea <laughs> yeah yeah cool and so as you as you said earlier i think my my thing is that i try to find families of tricks or or a general idea and then i find how i'm going to do it and what intent and what quality and i'm trying desperately to look for that <laughs> basically and to find what i like the most in juggling is when i find um, a sort of a technical framework that fits profoundly an intention or a rhythm or um, a, a state I want to be in. Mm. So I'll give you an example of, I, I really like fast things. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <clears throat> so these days, because I live in a tiny flat, I can't do big movements like I'm used to. So I'm looking for something that feels very hectic. Um, you might have seen a fantastic uh, video by Dago Komen where he juggles three balls in a positively, incredibly hectic way. And I found that fascinating. And I wanted to find sort of a, a framework to do that. So I started working on you know, things like that with small boxes and Okay, I'm being too fast, but you, you sort of get the idea. Yeah, sure, no, certainly. There's also what I um what I really um enjoy as well, and um is this this is this um variety as well from the fast, and then perhaps you like stop, and then you're like almost like uh stroke your club you know and then you'll be off again and uh and uh no, i think this is this is pleasurable isn't it it's this and um we're, we're sort of almost repeating ourselves now because i think a lot of jugglers we often worry about what it looks like you know on the outside so how do you uh, confront yourself with this like how it feels like and how what it looks like you know and that's a great question i think okay um, I think I'm positively terrible, but this becomes, in in a way, um, uh, a boon because because I'm positively terrible at predicting what things are going to look like and at conceptualizing what things should look like. I don't have to worry as much about it because I I can't you know if I sit there and tell you okay I'm going to invent a trick. It's not going to work. So I don't have that avenue of of having this, you know, uh, um, 
conceptualizing skill that some jugglers have. And it's fantastic. I think about, I think I do a lot of things that are similar to what only Tony Volman does with three clubs, but he's singularly more gifted than me at knowing what things look like and how to serve that. And I think I'm terrible at it. So that, that sort of gets it out of the equation for me. <laughs> so my personal way of doing is that, yes, when I work, I will focus on sensation. And I will focus on, before focusing on something a bit more um, nebulous, like the quality I want this to be, or you know, the color that I want to have, the rhythm I, I want it to have, I'm going to focus mainly on, does this feel good to do? And in that sort of, space, I will try and find, um, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, you know, when you do a back cross, say, there are those times when you do it and your body, it just flows and your body is not constrained and you, you just catch it and you feel fine. And there are times where you, you catch it, but you feel like your body is in an uncomfortable position or your hand was too far. Or I will actually try to base my technical research around those indicators. So I will not go, did I catch or did I not catch? I will go, okay, did I catch it in a way that felt natural, easy, comfortable? Mm -hmm. And so that will inform a lot of what I do and how I do research, which means that even if I have a set trick, like last year, I, I took a lot of time to try and learn uh, Seb's mess. Yeah, so like me, I can't do it at all. <laughs> like and, and now I can do it, but <laughs> the whole time, I force myself to, to just try and figure out from the inside if my body was doing the right thing that it should do and how I expected to find it was just saying, okay, does this feel comfortable? And, and it works. Even on very, very technical uh, tricks, even on, on seven clubs, I'm sure you could do it that way. And then when I, when I have the trick, I watch it on video. I film myself a lot, a lot of times, and then I watch it on video and I sort of go into this state of, oh, I like that rhythm. I like that contrast. I like that. I like when the two clubs separate me. And then I sort of refine how it looks. But at first, I, I will not go into it because it's not the moment for me when I'm still struggling with the trick to start going, oh, it works better if I do this or it works better visually if I do that. No, no, no. I focus on doing it in a way that feels good to me and then i polish its appearance basically and, I, and personally i need video for that i cannot do it from the inside yeah no video is a really big help you know and it's so like i've been juggling how long now 25 years or something tw no 27 years before it was a it was uh videos that were much more you know, harder to hard that you needed a big apparatus you know you could sit tiny you know, with a tablet or something, it's a second now, you know, it's really, yeah. I'm just going to see if anyone has a question on, uh, on, um, on here. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think people will watch this mainly afterwards. So, um, we like to try and keep this between like half an hour and 40 minutes, so it's not too long for people. But just, um, I've, I've been asking this the last couple of times, and I think it's quite a good question to ask yourself, even if you wouldn't listen to yourself, like what advice would you have given to yourself like 20 years ago, you know, or 10 years ago even? Mm. Like things you know now, I mean, it's possible you, you have to do the process anyway, you know, but it's just interesting to hear. And some people will pick up on this stuff as well. Mm. I think, oh, that's a good question. I think I would tell myself um, oof. okay, I think I would tell myself not to feel guilty of doing the things the way I want them to be done. Mm -hmm. I think that was the struggle for me as a juggler is that I was thrown in an arena of um, jugglers that were aiming to be pros pros because that's the the social group that I hang, hung up most when I was learning juggling eight years ago, so, uh, you know, even, even back five years ago, that still was my main um, juggling group. Um, and I was terrible at juggling, I was really bad. And, and, and there is this thing of, I had a clear 
vision of what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. I I'll give you an example. I always refused to learn five clubs when I was in school. That was something that didn't interest me. I felt a lot of people could do much better than me and that didn't feel fun. It, it felt really unfun to me for a lot of reasons. And it's a, a thing that I find wonderful when I see it, but to practice it just feels you know, problematic. And I had to fight a lot to be able to say to my teachers and to my peers, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do it because there are just so many other things that I want to work on that are more interesting to me and more fun. And I know it's maybe going to be a shortcut to a lot of, to understanding a lot of concepts. It's going to help me, you know, get gigs. I know that, but I'm not going to do it. And it, did, it didn't come from a, a place of pretension of I don't need it. It came from a place of panic. Of, but if I, if I spend a thousand hours of my, of my life learning five clubs to have a really perfect five clubs, then I'm gonna, not going to spend this time doing something else that would have been as valid and perhaps more interesting to me. So there was this tension all throughout. And I felt terrible. I felt terrible about having to be in this position of saying, against the best wishes of my best professors that I really like, who were singularly intelligent people, to have to look them in the eye and say, I know you're right, but I'm not going to do it, was disheartening to say the least. And it felt very constraining. Sure. And I, I would tell myself not to worry too much about it. And because I, I was going to learn five clubs anyway, along the way, and I did. But there was this tension of, ah, I have not to do it because I don't want to do it and I'm trying to force me to end yeah. that. So, so I'm just going to go on to this point here because I find it very interesting as well. You know, I find people that are very rooted in their, in what they want and more it. They don't generally find themselves very good in a school, but somehow you seem to have, have, have um, somehow you seem to fit in with the school, and um, and they didn't kick you out. <laughs> so, I, I'm I'm actually very very good at school. I, I loved it. I love going to school on a lot of subjects. I find that absolutely fascinating. I'm a, I'm a I'm a man that's very passionate about all kinds of even silly stuff. I'm a juggler, which is uh, by all means very, very silly in today's world. So that's yes, why it's, like it, yeah. so it's, it's why it's important and it's valid and it's wonderful to do it. Um, and so I don't know, whenever I, I was in front of a you know a vision that wasn't mine, I basically tried to say, okay, then this is a constraint you're imposing on me. I'm trying to evolve inside of it. I'm trying to to hack it, if you will, to do something that I want to do. And so I've, I think school for me was a great experience and it led me to many things that I wouldn't have done otherwise and to discover many things. But every once in a while, I would have to say, yeah, on my free time, you can force me to do it now, but on my free time, I'm not going to do it. And it worked in, in a lot of ways. It really worked and it didn't create much conflict in school. And so. That was a great experience for me, especially at Lido, where the, the, the ethos of the school board is basically to say, OK, what do you want to do? We're going to try and help you get there. So it shapes with a lot of people because it's a complicated place to be in as a, as a student to be able to say, I want this. And some people end up in terrible, terrible situations because of it, because nobody is there to give them direction and answers and, and, and shortcuts and everybody has a different opinion on everything. That's the whole thing of leader. But for me, it was fantastic. And all the schools I did before were the same. Lyon, which is the ECL in France, was a wonderful experience. Uh, L'Homme in the northern France that I did before was a great way to meet a lot of incredible jugglers. I did you know, workshop with people that you never get to see, like um, Kiev's uh, juggling teacher came to us to do a stage where we spent basically a week throwing one club in the air. And then for fun, at the end, he would go like, oh, okay, now let's stop working. For fun, we work on three up pirouettes. And that would be the stage. And it was a tremendously enriching experience. And so, yeah, I think school, if you have the right disposition to it, which is not for everyone, is a great opportunity to grow. 
but if you you struggle with it, it's not the only one. It's truly not. Mm. That we might take on. Okay, so um, let's wish everybody uh, that's, that's watched this video and, and congratulate everybody who's got so this to, this far. Anyway, thank you for watching. Yeah. And um, yeah, and you don't really even need to do anything. You know, I'm saying talk to the audience here. It, you, just listening to this will change something in your approach. You know, it will get you thinking. And um, so, um, so thank you, Idris. And, thank you uh, very much for inviting me. That was a great talk. And thank you, everybody that watches this. I think that's incredible that uh, that could happen.